All right, so it's time to calibrate the CNC machine's motion. And so in Mach 4, Mach 4 has this concept of counts per unit. And so if we go to a motor, this is my motor zero, which I've mapped to the x-axis. Uh, you'll see I've set up a counts per unit of 2037.18. And so one of the first things you set up in your configuration is in Mach 4 is whether the machine is going to operate in inches or in millimeters or inches or metric. So I've selected inches. So back on the motor tab, this 2037 means the Mach 4 is going to send 2037.18 pulses whenever the G-code tells it to move an inch for this axis. And so the the way I came up with this number was to reference the CNC router parts. So this is the Pro Rack and Pinion Drive for a NEMA 34 motor. If we scroll down here, they'll tell you a bit about their gear reduction and essentially what it means for a 200-step driver. So basically, my, my stepper motors move 1.8 degrees. So 360 divided by 1.8 is 200. So we know they're 200, 200 steps per revolution. And so my controller is using what's called micro step, which means it's going to break those up into, into subdivisions. And so mine does 10, a factor of 10. So my machine has 2,000 um, pulses per revolution. And so this is where we come up with this number, 2037.18 steps per inch. And so that's going to get us in the ballpark. So what we're essentially going to do, oops, I have another window up there. What we're going to do is um, we're going to use this value as, as our starting point, and we're actually going to measure it on the machine. And then we'll, we'll have to uh, modify this value and sort of sneak up on the, the best accuracy we can, we can get. All right, so I've taken a piece of brass stock I had and sharpened it and installed it in the spindle. And now I'm going to pass some G-code to move one inch to the right. We'll go back and forth a bit. And I'm just trying to see here if we're even close. And it looks like we're pretty good. Um, I wouldn't leave it like this. Uh, I think it's just time to, you know, step up the game with our measuring tools. But this is a good baseline. Time to switch to the micrometer to get it even more accurate. This is the probably the most accurate measuring device I own, so it's going to have to be good enough. So here I've set the micrometer on the x-axis, and the plan is to move the axis one half inch to the right and see how far it actually moves. I'm going to take at least three measurements and average them together to get the final result. And as you'll see, we come up a bit short of the full half inch, but I'm happy with the consistency, and as you'll see later, as I move the axis back to where it starts, the needle returns to zero, which is always encouraging. Go to this wizard, select select wizard, scroll down, steps per unit calculator basic, and it brings up this window. And so the current steps per unit we enter is 2037.18, the distance we requested it to move, which was half an inch, and the velocity, which was 120. And then based on our calculations from our three runs, I'm just going to say this is what it actually moved. And we're in the x-axis. So recalculate. So now it gives us this number. So now we take this, close this out. It will not automatically populate that value. So we go back to the x-axis. Now we enter this value. All right. Apply. OK. All right. Just want to verify. I'm in the habit of not trusting this interface. 
So it always seems to modify these a little bit. I'm going to accept that. I don't fully understand what it's doing. All right. So now we'll test it again. Yeah, so uh, I definitely wasn't expecting that. So it's exactly half an inch on the first try. Uh, I measured it a couple more times and it seems to be accurate and consistent. So I'm going to take it. <laughs> you know, I, I try not to be pessimistic, but, you know, after you have more experience building things, you, you just expect trouble. Well, at least I do. So anyway, I'm going to take it and move on to the next axis. So moving on to the z-axis, I didn't get so lucky, so I had to do about five iterations and towards the end I overshot and had to backtrack a little. Uh, I also had a little more trouble setting up the micrometer, so either direction you have to make sure that the motion of the axis is completely parallel to the shaft of the micrometer and I think just in the z-axis I had a little harder time setting that up. Um, so in the interest of brevity, I'm just going to show you the last setup and the final measurement. So here are some of the sample measurements for the z-axis run. Uh, I started at 50, 80 uh, counts per unit and then uh, overshot to 51, 64 and then backed up a little bit. And then after a couple more tries, ended up at the final 5106.4942. And uh, the, the measurement you'll see after this is the, the final one, basically. So that's pretty much it for the calibration. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing to the y-axis just to be certain. Um, it's kind of a relief uh, after two years of anticipating uh, this moment to see how accurate this thing's going to be. Um, you know, I don't, you know, this isn't the best micrometer in the world, but it's not the worst either. It's, it's not a steret or something, but it's good enough. Um, and I think I'm pretty happy with that. I, I was in the beginning hoping to be within, you know, 10, 10 thou. And so I think I'm closer than that, and that I, I'm pretty certain that this machine's rigid enough uh, to, you know, keep that kind of accuracy across the range of its motion. So cool! Thanks for watching.